Hey, divers, Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce Scuba Tech Tips. Here I am again. Now, today's tech tip is another tech tip that is based on inquiries from you, my viewers. Thank you very much, by the way. We're up to, I don't know how much is there, 7,500 viewers, a million, uh, 700 subscribers, and I'll, we'll soon be at a million views. Uh, that's fantastic. I really, really appreciate it. And I don't do any selling on here. I, I offer my suggestions, my ideas, and apparently you seem to love it. And I sure appreciate it very much. And I like the comments and the questions. Something you want to know, send me, a, send me a question. Chances are, after 60 years as a scuba diver, uh, I probably have a, 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 an answer for you, a proper answer. If not, uh, knowing me, some of you, I probably have an opinion. <laughs> and you can listen to it all and then decide with your own common sense what you want to do for you. Today, this is another one of our Enriched Air, commonly called Nitrox series. We've talked about it a bit and we'll do some more. We've talked about, yes, should you or should you not use Nitrox. We've talked about what it does for you. Is it good, bad, or, or ugly? Good, bad, or ugly? I like that. Uh, and we've, we've talked about training, how important it is, and so on. Well, today we're going to talk about something a little more basic, and that is O2 analyzers, or enriched air analyzers, or nitrox analyzers. One thing you learned, as we talked about already in the training program, is the fact that when you get your enriched air tank, that is your tank of air that has enriched air in it, nitrox when you can pick that up from the dive store be it a rental or, or get your own tank filled whatever the first thing you need to do before you leave the dive store is actually analyze the air now when they filled your tank they analyzed it and so technically it came out of the their system and it came into your tank and technically it should be 32 percent well standards and this is scuba diving standards require that you the diver analyze that air before you leave with it to be sure that you know that it's 32 percent because of course you're diving in the future it depends on that you're, you're going to plan your dives based on 32 percent so you want to make sure it's 32 percent and the dive store wants to be sure that the tank you take is 32 percent because you're going diving at 32 percent and so on so it's important that uh, that uh, that you analyze it and in order to do that there's two ways really a lot of divers have their own analyzer if you use nitrox quite a bit if you're into enriched air and use it quite a bit then getting your own analyzer is not dumb because it's small it's compact you can take it anywhere with you on your dive trips or just another small accessory you take with you and then no matter where you are you have your own analyzer that you know is accurate you've been using it you can check your air and be sure it's right um, every dive store will have an analyzer there at the dive store for you to use when they filled your tank with 32 percent they'll have another analyzer right there handy for you to use to analyze your nitrox if necessary but let's take a look just today. I just want to concentrate on the devices. And there are many devices on the market. I don't need to tell you, you know, uh, there are probably, I, I think, a dozen different devices. And we've used and sold a lot of them here. Uh, and uh, so, and they all work. They all work. Some are handier than others. Some are cheaper than others and still do a good job. Some of the sensors are easy to replace, the batteries. So, so we have, uh, we have uh, used several and, and decided on one or two that are particularly good, and I'll show you those today, two of them, okay? The first one is the one that we have by our air station. It looks like this. Now, this particular one is uh, from a company called uh, Max Air, Max Tech, M-A-X-T-E-C, Max Tech, M-A-X-T-E-C. And uh, this is the uh, Max O2 device. It's a very, very compact. The actual display itself is quite compact. And this is kind of nice because it comes with a curly cord, as you can see, and the sensor is at the end of the curly cord. So what we do here at our store so that our analyzer for the divers to use doesn't go for a walk, yeah, we've been known to happen, this actually mounts on the wall right by our air station. So it mounts on the wall and you turn it on, and when you turn it on, which one, this one, you turn it on, you get a reading. So this says right now the air I'm breathing is 20.5%. It should be 21. That's why I'm feeling a little bit low on oxygen. No, yes. So that's, that's called 21. So 20.5%. That's what it's reading right now in this room. So now what you do is you would take the sensor in this, and you put it in front of your tank valve. I don't know if you can see this, Kevin. Can you see what I'm doing here? And you turn it. And you simply hold it there with air coming out. There's a little hole in the end. You simply hold it there and watch the display. And the display will go up and up. It'll go to 25, 29. It'll come to 31.5, 31.9, 32. 
32, and it'll stop at 32, 31, 9, 32, 31, 9, 32, 32, 32. It'll stabilize at about 32. Done. That's 32%. And this is a nice little device. They're not terribly expensive. I'm going to guess it's three to four hundred dollars. But easy to change the sensor. That is the sensor in the middle. So you simply unscrew this filler portion and you take off the cord. It's an electrical cord. Not actually air goes to the sensor. The sensor changes the uh, oxygen into electricity and sends it through the cord. You take that off, put a new sensor in. The sensors are not inexpensive. No, probably half the price of the actual analyzer. And they have a, do have a fixed life. There are certain things you can do to make the life last a bit longer, which I'll mention to you in just a minute. So that's one device. We have also been using for a long time a very, very common device. You probably recognize this. This is a very common device, this one. This is from uh, Analox, and uh, a big, big company. They've been around for a long time, Analox. Just the way it sounds, Analox, with the next. And this uh, particular device is, is, is tested and tried and proven. It is very rugged. I don't suggest you drop it, but it's quite rugged. And, um, and uh, same price, four to $500, roughly, for in a box, ready to go. And uh, those, they, you can get this <clears throat> just in a plastic bag, or you can buy this also in a, uh, in a uh, little uh, Pelican box, which is waterproof and, and everything else. So that's an excellent idea. Get that extra bit so if it gets wet or gets dropped, it's still safe. So this Analox is very, very good. Now, this is the one you're most familiar with. There's a new one out. It's called the Analox OE2 Pro. Pro, it's called the Pro. And this is very, very similar. Not, a, not, a, not, not much difference. And with this particular one, you turn it on, and then you adjust a little differently. You adjust... So the reading says 21%, as it should, 21%. Now right here, there's a little hole. You put that against the tank, same thing. And this comes up to 32 stabilizers. There's your reading. Very, very easy. These also come with a sensor protector. So you take out the hole, and you can put this little cap in there. <clears throat> it's a little solid cap, O-ring sealed, that pops in there, you see, and keeps the, it saves the sensor from being exposed to air all the time. Helps a little bit. So this is probably the easiest one. It's compact, goes under wrist, comes with all the instructions about the fact that you you need to you need to compensate for the humidity and the temperature in the room and so on. So it's very very easy. So about four maybe five hundred dollars will get you a top quality uh, uh, O2 analyzer like this. Sometimes you can get them for a bit cheaper than that. And you take a look around and see what you can find. But that's typically the kind that you get. And it comes in a box with all the instructions. Uh, it used to come with a spare sensor, but the sensors are not cheap. The sensors are about $100. So what you need to try to do is keep this, put the cap in, rather than the hole, put the, put the sensor saver cap in, and then put this into a Ziploc bag. Seal it up tightly, suck the air out of it, seal it up nice and tightly, keep it in a cool, dark place, in the box is the best, or in that protective pelican type box, a hard plastic box uh, is even better. And that'll help your sensor last a lot longer. The sensor life is based on the amount of gas that it actually analyzes largely, uh, other than environmental concerns like heat and sun and so on, but largely based on the amount of gas. And the instructions will explain roughly how to calculate how much gas, you, gas you've analyzed. If you don't use a lot of gas, that sensor will last you several years before you have to replace it. Very easy to replace, four screws, new sensor, new battery, put it back together, and on you go. So one of these should last for years. This is one we've used in the store here now for, I bet you some here for five or six or seven years. It's still and not treated too well. It still works really well. So this is a long-term investment. If you're bigger than nitrox and uh, you'd use it a lot and want your own sensor, then I would probably recommend one of these two. And between the two, the handiest is this one from Analox. I don't usually like to name name brands, but this one is so good. And there really aren't that many. It's not like regulators where there's 100 on the market. There's only half a dozen of these. So there you go. Guys have been asking about analyzers. A couple of tips on what to look for and how to take care of them. We're going to talk some more about enriched air. That's enough for today. Talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce Scuba Tech Tips. See you guys.